This is Brent with Likens Motorsports, and um, I have a few odds and ends for you today. Just kind of bouncing around, <clears throat> uh, still waiting on parts to come in. But uh, we did get our push rods ordered from Trend for this 289. And one thing that we did notice um, last time, uh, I, I know I missed a video last week, got a lot of stuff going on, but um, last time we were checking on push rod length and rocker arm geometry and um these are pretty beefy rock rocker arms they got a, a a nice size body on them and uh you know there's a couple of repop valve covers for for this uh vintage of small block four scott drake makes most of them and apparently they have changed the the baffle design over time and um the valve covers that i happened to get had just a flat bottom plate as a baffle and it was going to take a lot of finagling to get those to work so i have um tried to find another set of valve covers and they're not available i guess there's an updated revision to those scott drake valve covers and they have a more traditional baffle style that fits in between uh the valve springs and such um while we were waiting on those um kind of got the go ahead from customer to also snag a set of these um factory style um 289 early 289 valve covers chrome and uh, they have a traditional baffle and the other one has um a different style of baffle but uh, it looks like it's going to work so i'm just mocking these up and um i think they're going to do just fine i do have a little bit of thicker valve cover gasket uh these are 5 16 thick you don't really see that especially with the way that the the valve cover is made it kind of swallows up the gasket a little bit but um i think i'm going to have to do just a little mm -hmm. bit of manipulation of our baffle but i think this is going to work just fine did follow up on um uh my crank grinder and uh, hopefully we'll have the crank uh for this little engine back in the next week or so and pistons are in route so things are going to start getting serious here uh, very shortly but uh i've got another update to do on uh, another engine that's currently in the works and I'm going to talk to you about push rods this is the piston and rod assembly for our 427 medium riser and um, hopefully we'll see the crankshaft on that one this week too uh, this one is uh, first in line to be completed um, but we'll get that done as soon as the the crank comes back i had to have the crank massaged a little bit to give us the bearing clearances that we needed but uh piston rings are filed and uh gaps are set and everything's cleaned up and rings are already on and all we have to do is just check our bearing clearances and uh, throw everything together so that's uh an update on that build and um i want to show you some things about uh some push rods Okay, so let's talk about push rods. These are uh, the new push rods that I checked um, length for and ordered for our 289 build. Um, these are 6300, 5 16 80 wall. And um, I got these from Trend. Um, there's several different high quality custom push rod manufacturers in the United States. Trend is one of those. Smith Brothers is another, and Manton is another. Um, most other places that you buy push rods from are probably um, buying from one of those big three companies that I just named. I know if you buy, um, I think, a Comp Cams push rod, you will get Trend. I think if you buy Manly, you will get Trend. Um, so they, they all buy from from uh, one of those big three manufacturers. I've used them all. They produce very high quality parts and uh, accurately uh, machined and assembled and uh, just good stuff. So 
Um, these are the push rods for <clears throat> our 289 build. I have not ordered the push rods yet for our 427 medium riser because it uses non-adjustable rocker arms. And uh, once the heads are assembled and torqued down, then I will go through and measure for each push rod individually and then uh, take into account lifter preload and all that jazz and, and get those push rods ordered. So let's, uh, let's talk about um, selecting uh, the push rod that you need. And um, that, uh, that, that revolves around several different factors. Uh, length is obviously the, the, one of the biggest ones. Um, if the length isn't right, then it throws your geometry uh, off or it sets your preload incorrectly. So that's why they make these push rod length checkers. And I have probably 10 or 12 of these in different lengths and different. Um, I have some with a cup end for FE stock uh, rocker arm stuff. Um, I've got these with a 5 16 ball on one end and a 3 8 ball on the other end so that I can use uh, a modern lifter and a factory non-adjustable rocker arm and then I have them with a 3 8 ball on each end um, so uh, the the overall gist of that is whatever situation you are working on whatever lifter you're using whatever rocker arm you're using then I would suggest buying a length checker for that specific application and it's very critical that you match the ball diameter to whatever you're working with. If you're, if you have a five sixteenths push rod length checker, and your rocker arm takes a three eighths ball, then your your length is going to be different uh, as measured than than what you re really need. Um, the other thing is the material. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, but this is not a chrome molly push rod. Um, and this would be for a factory uh, setup where you don't have guide plates. Okay, your guide plates are usually steel and you want a good hardened push rod so that when it rubs on the guide plate, it doesn't wear through. Um, so your, your cheaper push rods will probably be uh, just a... Uh, a cheaper material and you really have to watch out for that your guide plate um, applications will need to be a chromoly push rod that's hardened and it won't uh, wear through if it rubs the guide plate and and it will so need to keep that in the back of your mind as well the uh, obviously uh, as I mentioned push rods come with different ends and uh, this is a cup end for a uh, a factory FE ball style adjuster in a rocker arm and um, uses a, 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 a ball end for the lifter end. So these are obviously available that way in different diameters. There's another one and, and I think this is a 7 16 diameter. This one's a 3 8 with chromoly tubing. Um, these are available, obviously, in uh, pretty much any length that you can come up with and that you need. And here is a half inch diameter, um, very high end push rod for some really high RPM, high spring pressure deal. And um, here's the next step up from that. This is a 9 16 diameter push rod that I use for some pulling truck engines. Uh, we're talking, you know, 1,200, 1,300 pounds of, of spring load on over the nose. So you need a lot of rigidity. Typically, when you get above, you know, um, open spring pressures of, uh, I would say, 450, 500 pounds, then I would start to look at different diameters and wall thicknesses. For that, the the a five sixteenths eighty wall push rod, such as this, will handle uh, a, a good deal of spring pressure. Um, 
especially for this size. Okay, this is a very short length. And if we look at, you know, the difference in length, this is 6300. This is over 10 inches, if I remember correctly. So, um, you know, obviously a lot, a lot less length to, uh, to get into any kind of buckling uh, or um, side loading on that. So you have to, normally what I say is uh, look at the, the largest push rod that you can fit into your typical or in your specific situation. Um, obviously you're limited to what kind of guide plates you have. Um, 5 16 and 3 8 are your most common guide plates and uh, you'll probably have a hard time finding something for uh, something bigger than that. Um, you want to also look at how much room that you have either in your push rod tube if it's an FE or in your cylinder head if it's a, a small block forward or big block forward. Um, a lot of the newer heads don't have all that much room so you can only fit what you can fit but um, i would uh, uh, always advise to to try and fit the largest diameter and and the thickest push rod if you're getting up you know over those 400 450 pounds of, of spring spring loads um, it does not it's a common wives tale that I see bounced around on the internet all the time. Guys say, oh, you want a, a, a small push rod as possible because it's extra weight. This weight does not affect your, your valve train. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's in between the lifter and, and the rocker arm and the spring force and, and all that stuff. And um, by all means, do not cut yourself short. When you're dealing with some really high performance applications, do not cut yourself short on push rod uh, thicknesses and diameters. Fit as big as as you can fit in there. And if it means that you can only fit, you know, a seven sixteenths on one and a half inch, uh, you know, seven sixteenths on the intake side, half inch on the exhaust side, then do that. If it means that you can fit. Uh, you know, seven sixteenths on the intake and nine sixteenths on the exhaust, then do that. So the higher the RPM, the more spring pressure, um, all that stuff, you want the most rigidity that you can get. Okay, so, um, you know, you, it, it's not as simple as, oh, I need this length push rod. That's what I'm going to order. So put some thought into it. Take a look at your whole application and uh weigh you can also weigh your your needs against the cost so um there may be a situation where you can fit a tremendously large push rod in there but the application just doesn't warrant it um you know for instance on uh, take for example a big block ford you got a ton of room to to mess with different push rod lengths and, and diameters and wall thicknesses and that sort of thing. You know, if it's a flat tap at cam with 250 pounds of spring pressure and it's a 4,000 RPM truck engine, don't spend $600 on a set of 916s push rods. Okay, I guess that's what I'm getting at. So take into account all of it and, and weigh the cost against what your needs are and what your your whole setup is. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap up uh, today's video. And uh, like I said, I apologize for not putting one out last week. Uh, we had some family in and I had to do uh, a good bit of traveling. Um, last week, um, my grandfather was not doing very well, so I wanted to go and, and see him um potentially for for the last time and he just passed away this past tuesday so i would appreciate everyone's thoughts um on that um i'm gonna miss my grandfather uh, i have a lot of memories with him uh we shared a lot of the same interest uh horses and um uh hot cars i guess he's uh probably the originator of where I get my uh, enjoyment with, with 
hot cars and hot engines and that sort of thing. Um, my dad always told me that when my grandfather always bought a car, he always bought the biggest engine that he could get in it. So um, that's, uh, that's a man after my own heart there. So I think I probably have uh, his... his his blood in my lineage, uh, in more than, in more than one way. Um, so I can probably attribute, um, my engine building, uh, love for engine building and love for engines, love for engines from, from my grandfather and from my dad. But, uh, he lived a very long life. He was 93 years old. Uh, he almost made it to 94. His birthday would have been in September. Um, so he, he got to see a lot of things. He was, uh, a very hard worker, uh, started out his life, uh, logging with mules and, um, he was a carpenter by trade and, and a farmer and, um, just a very hardworking man. He was a good man. Um, I just have so many good memories of him. So, um, that's that. And, um, Funeral will be will be this weekend, so everybody keep keep my family in your in your thoughts. All right, guys, I hope to um, have some parts trickle in here next week, and finally I'll get a couple of these engines uh, rolling pretty hard, and then I can go on to the others that are in in the backlog. But um, should have some videos for you next week, so stick around. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a day. So you guys have a good weekend.